Hello everyone and welcome to round 4 of the 2020 Tata Steel Masters Edition. It's Jordan Van Forest versus Magnus Carlsen. And before we check out the game, I just have a very short announcement. I was a guest at uh, Ben Johnson's chess podcast, so if, you, if any of you have some extra time and are interested in that, I will put a link to it in the description below. It will be the first thing you will see. Uh, so uh, it's my first time ever on a podcast. I'm not saying it's good, but you are more than welcome to check it out. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's check out the game. And it's a very important game for Magnus Carlsen. So far, he's been undefeated for 110 games, which uh, equals uh, Sergei Tiviakov's record of 110 unbeaten games. And if Carlsen manages to survive this one, uh, it's uh, 111 games and he sets a new world record. So uh, will he be able to do this? Uh, well, we, we will check it out. And so far, the two of them met only once and it was in last year's Tata Steel Masters edition uh, where uh, Van Forest uh, tested Carlsen World Series Championship preparation and uh, they, they played the, the Sveshnikov Sicilian, uh, but Carlsen was able to, to win that game, uh, proving that his World Series Championship preparation was uh, uh, was indeed, uh, well, uh, great. Uh, so let's see what he prepared uh, for, for this year. So Van Forest opens with E4. Uh, we have e5 by Magnus, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. And we have knight to f6, the two knights defense. And uh, more, most likely, Van Forest prepared for this as Carlsen went for the two knights defense, uh, well, qu 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 quite some times uh, throughout his career. So, knight to g5, the knight's attack, uh, going for the, for the f7 pawn. And Carlsen replies with d5, it is the... Uh, uh, the the most common reply. Uh, we have e captures on d5, knight to a5, challenging the bishop, bishop to b5, check c6, and now uh, d captures on c6. We have b captures on c6, uh, and now uh, returning not to not to e2, but to d3. If any of you uh, checked out uh, my stream uh, a few days ago, I, I played one game where I went for this bishop to d3 line. I said that it's, uh, it's popular today, although I don't really know why bishop to d3 is played. I do know that uh, black shouldn't go h6 like he usually does when the bishop is on e2 because now you can retreat with uh, the knight on e4 you don't have to go to f3 and allow e4 but other than that i mean you will have to move it at some point uh, to free up the the d pawn but uh, it is very popular today uh, knight to d5 opening up an attack towards the knight and now knight back to f3 so now you, you do not have support to push e4 uh, we have bishop to d6 by magnus and now knight to c3 we have castles by magnus and now there is one uh, th there are a few games where castles was played uh, but here uh, van forest goes for bishop to e2 right away making room for his d pawn and uh, it is already as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So Carlsen re replies with knight to f4, uh, attacks the bishop on e2, and then forest just castles. With bishop to g4 by Carlsen, and now d3, opening up an attack towards the knight. And Carlsen says, uh, okay, let's just uh, grab that grab that bishop. Uh, we are a pawn down, but which is normal when you go for the two knights defense, but I do have the bishop pair. So knight captures with check, queen captures on e2, and now f5. So already... Uh, quite uh, quite a dangerous expansion for black, but also for white. And here, Van Forest goes for e3, uh, just uh, uh, asking, what do you want to do? Do you want to capture or do you want to go bishop to h5? Uh, of course, Magnus is not interested in capturing. He wants to preserve his bishop pair. He goes back and now immediately g4. And uh, up until this point, uh, Van Forest didn't spend any time. So this is all uh, well within his preparation. And uh, Carlsen has to decide what to do now. And here he took some time, but he fairly quickly decided on f captures on g4 and now comes knight to g5 and here already black has to be very careful of course you cannot capture as the bishop would hang on h5 and there are uh, well there are some ideas you could try like rook to f3 seems appealing but not really because white will not capture with the knight and, and allow g captures on f3 uh, white will just play h captures on g4 and now everything hangs just bishop captures on g4 and queen e4 threatening the bishop threatening the rook and threatening to capture on h7 so you will either have to give up the bishop uh, by playing something like bishop f5 but then you give up the rook so you cannot save everything here you're just dead lost so after knight to g5, Magnus goes for queen to d7. And uh, here it's interesting uh, to, to note that uh, queen c8, queen e8, and queen to d7 are the top recommendations by the engine. So it is it, it was kind of weird to see that Van Forest uh, took some time uh, here to reply. So it's, it seems like it's not uh, within his preparation, but he replies with the strongest idea, knight c to e4. 
uh, brings another knight uh, uh, closer to the black king, also uh, threatens to, to pick up the bishop pair. So Magnus uh, moves it, bishop to e7, and now knight to g3, goes after the light square bishop. Magnus moves that as well. And now, uh, what do you play here? Well, the, the, well <laughs> the most interesting thing to consider is definitely queen captures on e5, if you can grab another pawn. Uh, why not? And uh, it, it, it can be played, however, it, it runs into a really complicated position. For example, G captures on H3, and now it's uh, hard to say what, what's happening here. Uh, there is the, the interesting queen captures on A5 line, of course, all of you see that the knight is hanging, but it's not good. So it's it's just a just a very complex position which uh, obviously uh van forest did not prepare but if you capture here then you get h6 threatening to win win back the piece the knight moves and now you go queen to g4 with ideas of queen f3 queen g2 mate uh, and uh, the only way for white to, to defend this is king h2 queen f3 now king captures on h3 and now rook f5 threatening the queen and uh to shift the rook to h5 with mate because the knight is uh, the knight is uh, pinned you will not be able to move it but white has knight to d2 going after the queen so here we would see just uh, queen captures on g3 winning back the piece king captures and rook captures on a5 and the game continues magnus is down down a pawn but he still has the bishop pair so as usual a trade-off uh, so this is what could happen, this queen captures on e5 move. However, uh, Van Forest goes for the immediate queen captures on g4, which means he's uh, still well within his prepared line. Queen captures on g4 and now h captures on g4. And now comes c5 by Magnus, uh, freeing the c6 square for his knight. He wants to remember the knight to d4 or b4, depending on what white plays. And there was some uh, saying in the chat that uh, Magnus offered the draw here as uh, Van Forest took a lot of time to respond to this move, some maybe 11, 12 minutes. Uh, however, later it was said that it, it, Magnus did not in fact offer a draw here. So. Uh, th there's that. So knight back to e4 uh, by Van Forest. Now preparing bishop to e3 to go after the c5 pawn. And Magnus goes knight to c6. Now ready to remaneuver it to d4 or b4. With bishop to e3 with a double attack on the pawn here. And now knight to d4. Bishop to b4 is also very interesting as you go after the c2 pawn. But then you get rook fc1, rook a to c8. Now defending here. And if you, if you kick away the knight, then you can just go knight back to d5. And the pawn is nicely protected. So this is one way to go about it. Uh, Magnus decides uh, on a different idea, knight to d4. And already here, Magnus was up on time. So uh, Van Forest uh, is no longer within his preparation. He's down to one hour and Carlsen is one hour and 15 minutes on the clock. And here, uh, the c2 pawn is under attack. And again, uh, Van Forest spends uh, about 10 minutes on his move. He goes rook a to c1, just defends the pawn. Uh, if c3, if c3, you just go back knight to e6, and then you're stuck with the uh, with the uh, uh, backwards uh, d3 pawn is going to be very weak. It will be uh, e easy to attack it, so not the greatest of moves. So rook a to c1 defending, and now rook a to c8 by Magnus preparing c4. Magnus also wants to get rid of the weak isolated pawn. Uh, and here king to g2 by Van Forest, uh, and Magnus immediately uh, strikes with c4. So we have bishop captures on d4, Van Forest gives up the other bishop as well. We have e captures on d4 and now f3, uh, strengthening the knight here. And now rook to c6, Magnus prepares to bring the other rook into the game as well. Uh, and now b3, this was the, the critical line and it, it invites bishop to a3 but... Um, uh, the, the position is extremely complicated here. Uh, Magnus uh, played it fairly quickly. Here at the moment b3 was played, Van Forest was already down to 35 minutes. Magnus still had over an hour. So Magnus quickly played bishop to a3. And here uh, I did uh, ca uh, yeah, I catch some footage, uh, live footage, where Van Forest was considering this position. And he was really struggling. Uh, he was struggling wh whether or not uh, should he play d captures on c4. And this is the critical decision to make here. He did not play it. Uh, it's a hard decision to make bishop captures, rook captures, and now you have these three uh, three pawns here against one. Well, okay, four, but uh, this one uh, it, it is guarded by this pawn. So basically three to one, and uh, well, you are up against Magnus, so definitely not an easy decision uh, to make. But this was the way to, to go to seek for advantage. Uh, he decides to move the rook, he plays rook c to e1, and now Magnus captures, rook captures on d3, we have c captures on d3, and now a5. He wants to uh, 
push a4 at some point, uh, a trade of that pawn as well. Uh, we have rook to f2 by Van Forest, now <clears throat> uh, guarding the second rank, but now bishop to c1, again immediately played by Magnus, and here Van Forest is already down to 25 minutes on the clock. Uh, the idea is to bring the bishop over to e3, and the bishop pair will do, do, their, uh, uh, do their best to, to well, uh, harass the rooks and maybe even pick one of them off. Uh, we have knight to d2, and here uh, bishop captures on d3. Uh, grabbing a pawn with knight to c4. Here, uh, Van Forest wants bishop captures on c4, followed by rook captures here. Uh, now, you have to move the bishop to d5 to keep an eye on the rook, and then after captures, captures, we get to this pretty much equal endgame. Uh, it's not equal, white is better, as, uh, well, black's, black has three pawn islands, and white has two, but on the other hand, Magnus has a passed d pawn, so it's hard to decide uh, fr from this position if it will be a strength or a weakness, but the, uh, with the black king being so far away, it's hard to say that it's, uh, you know, you will be able to just, just push it uh, or something like that. Uh, but okay, after knight to c4, Magnus goes for bishop to f4 instead, uh, and now comes knight to e5, uh, attacking uh, the, the rook on c6, uh, and Magnus goes rook to c3, as the bishop on d3 is under attack as well. So rook to, rook to c3, and then Forrest uh, picks off one of the bishops. So knight captures on d3, rook captures on d3, and now knight to f5. And here... Again, a very interesting moment, Magnus plays g6, kick, pushing back the knight, and here he's asking, do you want to capture on d4 or not? Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to decide, for example, if knight captures on d4, uh, sorry, not, not on d4. Uh, first, uh, of course, Van Forest played rook to e4, he kicked away uh, the bishop and added a second attacker here. Uh, Magnus removed the bishop, bishop g5, and now uh, he has to decide whether to capture on d4. Uh, I overlooked the, the rook to e4. Uh, but uh, he doesn't. He plays knight to e7 check. Point being that after knight captures here, you have to calculate bishop to e3 with a double attack. But then you have knight to e6 going after the rook. Bishop captures, knight captures on f8, and now Magnus has rook to d2 with some nasty discoveries. But that's the thing. There, there are no nasty discoveries here. So once the knight moves, you're going to pick up the a2 pawn. And still, everything is on a light square. Uh, there's really nothing to worry about. There are no, no tricks here. Uh, but still, uh, Van Forest decides for knight to e7 check instead, and here king to h8. And now Van Forest is down to 11 minutes, Magnus has some 55 minutes on the clock. We have knight back to c6, again, uh, threatening to pick up the d4 pawn, and now bishop to e3 by Magnus. Uh, there was the possibility of bishop to h4, a uh, very interesting uh, idea. If you, if you mo move the rook away from the defense of the f3 pawn, then the other rook crashes through. So you have to go knight to e5, defend and attack. Uh, once the rook moves, rook d1, now you go rook to f1. Again, offer a trade, rook d2, check, king h3, attack the bishop, and bishop back to d8. So here, uh, basically keeping the tension. However, uh, Magnus decided to go for bishop to e3 instead, defending and attacking, and now rook to e2. And with rook to e2, move forward, he has been played, and uh, players have reached time control, so uh, Van Forest ga gains some precious additional time. Uh, we have rook to d1 by Magnus, now preparing rook to g1 to push back the king, then he wants to go rook to c1 and start pushing his pass pawn. Uh, Van Forest uh, takes this opportunity to, to, to grab the a5 pawn. We have knight captures on a5, and now Van Forest has two connected pass pawns on the queen side, but Carlsen has a very, very strong uh, pass to d pawn. So here Magnus goes rook to g1 check. We have king to h2 and now rook back to c1, not allowing the knight to enter the game. Also uh, preparing to capture on f3 and also preparing to push his past d pawn. So here, uh, Van Forest uh, really uh, took some time to consider what to do here. And in the end, he played king back to g2. It defends the f3 pawn and also the king is much closer to the past d pawn. Uh, sorry, so yes, the past d pawn. So uh, rook to g1 check again by Magnus, checking to see uh, if maybe Van Forest is interested in playing something else although nothing else is is, is good uh, so king back to h2 rook to c1 uh, and here we have king to g2 and now uh, what do you think uh, Carlsen played next uh, did he repeat and uh, uh, accepted a draw by threefold repetition and claimed his 111 games without a single loss so uh, claiming the world record or did he continue the game by pushing d3 so what do you think happened here 
Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you what happened here. Uh, Magnus played uh, rook to g1 check. And uh, well, no, it, it was actually in this position after king to g2 was played that the players agreed to a draw. Uh, you could decide to, to push the d-pawn, but it's not not really promising anything. You do win the exchange. However, you have to give uh, give up one more pawn because after this, rook captures an e3. You're going to play d2, threatening d1, and then goes rook d4. You're going to bring a queen into the game, captures, captures, and now you have to play this position where, yes, you're up the exchange, but Van Forest has two connected pass pawns on the queen side. So, uh, probably there's a very special way how, how to treat this position, which I'm sure Carlsen knows, but... Uh, uh, he decided that uh, that it it wasn't worth it, and that uh, if this was worth it, then Magnus would have gone for it, I believe. But uh, he decided it wasn't, and after King to G2, they agreed to a draw, and Magnus is now 111 games uh, classical games without a single loss. Uh, the last game he lost was in 2018 to Shahriar Mamedyarov in the uh, Bill Chess Festival. Uh, and after that, uh, no losses. So, uh, which is quite impressive, as I, I've read that. Uh, uh, on average, his his opponents were rated uh, 2,700 something, whereas uh, Sergei Tivakov's record, his opponents were rated uh, in average 2,400 something. So, quite quite the record. Uh, so yeah, uh, another day, another record, as the title says. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jose Veraldo Ali Jr., uh, Frank Combs, uh, Prakar Maini, and Victor Weiss for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Tata Steel, the coverage of the Women's World Chess Championship, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, uh, and so on. And do check out the podcast at Ben Johnson. Uh, the links are in the description below. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.